Hello, I'm Steve Friedman with Rockstar Excel. Today I'm showing you how to standardize names in Excel. It's a common problem that you're pulling in data from different sources, which have names listed in different ways. But you need all the names in the same format to combine them. Here's how to do that. You'll typically find names in one of three formats. You can have the first name followed by the last name, the way you'd typically say it out loud as in Aneta Palmatier. Or you can have the last name, comma, first name, Al Coker, comma, LaRue. Or you can have the first name and the last name in separate columns like this. Of the three, I highly recommend using separate columns because that's the easiest to work with and change into other formats. Or even better, use three columns, one for the first name, one for the last name, and one for the full name. Nothing wrong with being redundant, and also redundancy doesn't cause any problems. So let me show you how you can go from separate columns to the full name. So let's call this column first space last. And what we'll do is use the ampersand symbol to do this, which combines the contents of multiple columns into a text string. If you don't know about using the ampersand symbol or the and symbol in Excel, you should watch the video on it that I'm linking to in the description and the blog post for this video. So we just type equals A2, or we can just link to it directly, and quote space quote to put a space between them, and then another and or ampersand symbol, and then just click on B2. And then that gives us the full name, and then just fill this down. And let's resize that column, and then we're done. And then if we want to do last comma first, we can just do equals b2, and then ampersand quote comma space quote ampersand a2 and then just fill that down. So that's easy enough. Then if we want to go ahead and sort this, we can just put a filter on it, and then we can sort by either of these columns easily enough. And if you don't know about filters, you should see my video on filters Excel's easy button, which I'm linking to in the description and blog post. And if we need to use a formula or lookup for the complete name, we can do that. We can also do it for the first name or the last name. That's why I recommend using actually three columns with the first, the last, and the first and last. You probably don't need four columns with the last comma first unless you actually use that format a lot. So that's the easiest case where you're starting off with separate columns. So now what if you're starting off with last comma first? How do you convert that into separate columns? Well, first, whenever you start mucking around with data, it's a best practice to just go ahead and copy the tab. So you right click on the tab and do move or copy and then click create a copy. And now we've got two versions of this. So let's rename this last comma first original data. And we'll rename this last comma first edited. Okay, and then let's just also go ahead and copy this column so we can see what we're working with. And now we're going to use the text to columns feature, which is this one here. It has the three lines with the curved arrow going to three boxes like this. So you go ahead and press text to columns, make sure it's on delimited, which it's on by default, and then click next. And here in delimiters, you unclick tab and you click comma and then you click next and then click finish. And that splits this out into two columns. And by the way, text to columns is on the data ribbon. You're not quite done at this point. And let me show you why. So here, if I just go ahead and type LaRue, so 
it looks like this is LaRue here, but it doesn't actually, which I can demonstrate by saying equals if d2 equals c2 comma quote same quote comma different. And that's telling me these cells are different, even though they look like they say the same thing. And the reason they're different is because when over here, there's this comma, but then there's a space after it. So when we separated out this to two columns, this actually says space LaRue. So if I were to delete that, now they're the same. But let me just undo that and show you the quick way to fix that by using the trim function. The trim function removes spaces from the beginning and end of a text string, which usually you don't want spaces at the beginning and end of a text string, so that just cleans things up. So we do equals trim that and double click that down. And now we're just going to copy and paste value here, paste special value. And again, now if we just retype LaRue here, it's telling us it's the same. And then we can just delete these columns. We go back to the home menu and click delete. And now we've got the last and the first name in separate columns. And if you wanted to move this so the first name was first, you can just highlight the column, click Control X to cut it, and then click the insert button to move it over. So that is how you split last name comma first into two columns. But then the hardest case is if you want to split first space last into two columns. So once again, we're going to copy our original data. So we create a copy. Let's rename this first, last, original, and we'll call this first, last, edited. And then let's just copy and paste that. And then we go ahead and go to data, text to columns, just like we did before. And we do delimited. And this time we're going to do space and click next and finish. But now you see our problem here is that some names have spaces in their first and last name. So now instead of being two columns, we've got multiple columns. And the additional problem there is that we as people can look at this and say, okay, Van Horn, that's a last name. But then we come here and say, Mary Kate, that's a first name. But Excel can't tell that. It doesn't know intuitively what's a first name and what's a last name. It's all just text strings to Excel. So there's no way to write a formula that will parse this out and fix it. You have to do it manually. But what you can do is filter to quickly find the exceptions. Uh, and again, if you're not familiar with filters, I highly recommend you check out my video on them. So just click anywhere in the middle of your results and then just go to sort and filter and put on a filter. And that's going to put filters over all of your data. And then you want to go to the first column that is beyond the one name, first and last name. So here we go to column D and we're going to filter to remove anything that's blank or just spaces. And now we're just looking at our exceptions here. Now you could just retype these and just change the, you know, this to Van Horn. But in doing that, the problem with that is you risk typos. So it's better to do this with formulas. So what I'm going to do here is just type 1F comma 2L because this he has one first name and two last names or two word last name. And this is going to be 2F comma 2L. And this is going to be 2F comma 1L. And 
this is also going to be 2f comma 1l. So I'll just copy that. And now we go ahead and label this first and this last. And then we're going to say equals b2. And here we're going to do equals c2 and quote space quote and d2. And now for this two first name, two last name, we do equals b2 and quote space quote, quote space quote, and or ampersand c2. And here we do equals d2 and quote space quote and e2. In here, it's equals b2 and quote space quote and c2 and equals d2. And here, because it's another 2f1l, we can just copy and paste that. And that's why you want to label these first, because then you can just start copying and pasting the formulas for the same one or the same type. And now you need to copy paste the value to get these over here and here. But to save you from having to copy these one by one, especially if we're dealing with a much larger spreadsheet where you may have a lot more of these exceptions, what you can do is go ahead and take this filter off, just select all here, and then let's just copy this first and last over here. And then we're going to use an if formula. So we do equals if parentheses, and then we use the is blank function. So we say is blank, and then we look over at this cell H2, and then if that is blank, we are going to say comma, and then go ahead and copy the first name from here, from the ones where there isn't an exception, and then if this isn't blank, we're, we'll copy it from H2 where there is an exception and close parentheses. And then we can just fill that over to K here and just double check, see if that is looking and seeing if I2 is blank, that means there's not an exception and it's getting it from over here. And then if it's not blank, it's going to get it from here, from I. So if we just go ahead and fill that all the way to the bottom, we'll see here on this one, see it's copying Sally Jesse's name instead of just getting Sally, whereas for the ones without exceptions, it's just getting their regular first and last name. And then we can just copy these two columns and then paste special and value. And now we have the correct information and we can just go ahead and delete these columns. I also received a question about first initial and last name, but I think that's a less common scenario. So I'm going to split that out into a bonus video, which I'll link to from this one if you're curious about it. So that was how you standardize names in Excel. Again, I think the best strategy is to use three columns like here. Let me just hide this where you've got the first name, the last name, and then the first and last name in its own column. Please like and subscribe and check out rockstarexcel.com. There you can read our Excel tips and download the list of 14 essential Excel skills see what upcoming classes we're offering, book a free consultation to learn how we can save you time and money. You can also submit your questions about how to do things in Excel. This video came from a viewer question. I like answering them and it's a sneaky way for you to get some free consulting. So please send them to me. Once again, I'm Steve Friedman with Rockstar Excel. Please keep watching so I can show you how to be an Excel rockstar.